Hey guys, this is Eric from Tech It Forward, and today I'm going to try to game on a laptop that somebody just gave to me. Now, for a laptop that was released in 2005, the Inspiron 9300 actually has some pretty decent specs. It has a blazing single core Pentium M at 1.6 gigahertz. It has 2 gigs of RAM, an 80 gig hard drive, and ATI Radeon Mobility X300 graphics, all of which, by the way, are upgradable. That's what's nice about these older laptops is that they're really big and nothing really has to be soldered on, so most of the stuff, including the CPU, is upgradable. With a 17-inch display and coming in at 8 pounds, you can tell that this laptop was meant to be more of a desktop replacement or a media consumer. The display itself is 1400 by 900 and it has pretty decent viewing angles because of the IPS panel. And it gets pretty bright, which is a bonus if you're outside ever. On the front, there are these nice little multimedia buttons that have play pause, forward, backward, volume up and down, the kind of stuff that you'd need if you're watching a movie. On the left side, there's a DVD drive and two USB ports. On the back side, we have a VGA port, a DVI port, four USB ports, which brings the grand total of USB ports to six, which really, I wish modern laptops these days would have six USB ports. There's a telephone jack for dial-up, 10100 Ethernet, and an S-Video if you want to go out to TV, maybe watch movies like this laptop's supposed to do. On the other side, we have an SD card reader, a FireWire port, and headphone microphone jacks. There's also a spot for the hard drive, and there's also a card bus slot. Ooh. On the bottom of the laptop, we can see how upgradable it really is. There's two little doors for the CPU and memory, and if you wanted to, you could take apart the whole back and get at the video card and upgrade that. I also like this little button on the battery. So let's look at how well it actually games. Starting off with Half-Life in the 1440x900 resolution, we got great results. Our average FPS was 96, and our 1% and 0.1% lows were 70 and 40, respectively. Overall, a very playable experience with no problems. We also saw similar results in Counter-Strike, with an average FPS of 94, and 1% lows to 45, and 0.1% lows to 36, which are both on the Gold Source engine, so I'd expect similar results. But this laptop handled them very well. Trying an open world game, we have Morrowind in the 800x600 resolution with the lowest settings. Our average FPS was a respectable 67, but the 1% and 0.1% lows tell a different story, being 10 and 4. The game stuttered and hitched a lot, making it not unplayable, but it wasn't just a great experience either. For a top-down game, we have Age of Empires 2, running just fine at 66 frames per second, with 1% lows to 58 and 0.1% lows down to 31. Feeling confident in this laptop, I decided to try Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. I ran it at the lowest settings, at the 800x400 resolution, but I got respectable results. The average FPS was 57, with 1% lows down to 21, and 0.1% lows down to 12. Since Lost Coast is generally more graphics intensive than the base game, expect similar results in Half-Life 2. I was actually really surprised on how it handled Half-Life 2. Trying a newer game, I tested the Escapists which ran at a pretty good FPS of 42, with the 1% and 0.1% lows down to 19 and 13. But I didn't really notice them as much in this game. This game ran pretty well overall. Ending off our tests, we have Minecraft, which I ran with Optifine and all the settings turn off or down. The weakness of having a single core CPU really showed in these results, with an average FPS of 75, which sounds fine, but the 1% and 0.1% lows down to 12 and 4 when they were chunks loading in. The CPU really does hold back the graphics card in this game. So, overall, the laptop should be able to run any of the early source games and older just fine. But you'll have to remember it only goes up to DirectX 9, so any remotely newer game won't be able to run. I couldn't even get Mountain Blade Warband to launch for some reason, and it supports down to DirectX 7, but your mileage may vary. So, is this laptop worth it? Well, considering I got mine for free, yes. Anytime I want to run Windows XP or play older games, it does just fine. But if you were to go out and buy it, probably not you can get newer laptops for very cheap on the used market and Craigslist. But if you happen to stumble upon one and want to play older games, this laptop is very capable. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.